Microsoft have been setting their sights on improving the meeting experience and with some of the recent changes that have been announced at Microsoft Ignite and with uh, some of the messages landing in the message center, I think I've found a trend and I just want to draw your attention to this as I reflect on some of the things that were talked about at Microsoft Ignite. Uh, let's take a look at some of the blog posts. Right, so our blog post, we do have a lot of uh, things around meetings and webinars. And if we just dive into some of those webinar announcements, actually, no, we'll go back a bit here. Back into to meetings, some of the things that we uh, see arriving now are around trying to help us come up with more interesting meeting formats. A dynamic view, showing uh, the content and doing that more auto automatically, adjusting to who is in the meeting and what you're trying to present. Um, there's the view switcher so that we have more control over the content that we're um, trying to, to show and see. And some of those presenter tools, uh, which this is presenter mode, a little confusing that it's very similar to the naming presenter mode within PowerPoint, but in a Teams meeting, it's uh, suggesting or showing that we can have a few different ways of presenting the content with us being over the top of it, beside it, and being more engaging. Now, with, with those sorts of trends and with some of the interaction that we see with uh, PowerPoint Live and uh, the reactions that can be showed there, this is all, of course, making our meetings more engaging as we are running them within our, our organizations. But I do think, too, that there is a consolidation of the purpose of the Microsoft Teams meetings or internal meetings, but also for webinars, because in our next topic, what we do see is um, the advancement of the webinar feature where we are able to uh, point people to a registration page. They can register, um, they can get email confirmations, we can ask them some questions along the way. Uh, and if you uh, are also using Dynamic 365, then you can also automate and expand on some of the follow-up for the, the webinar afterwards. Another trend that we saw here, which is... Now, talking about expanding on those meetings uh, is that it's going from a 300 attendee limit to a 1,000 attendees. And so we're looking at, of course, holding larger uh, meeting formats. Now, with a webinar, we've got lots of different choices about um, how we might want to run that. We might want to be not very interactive. We don't want people to be able to um, come off mute and the like. So we want to have control over that. Uh, maybe we do want a more interactive phase where we are uh, allowing people to come off mute and they can make comments and ask their questions. And so with this, being able to grow our audience so uh, hugely, really, to a 1,000 a thousand interactive attendees, um, great, okay, so this means that we can just use a Microsoft Teams meeting, maybe uh, in an external sense that we're using it to host a webinar, and we can use these exciting new formats to display our content. We can allow um, people to, uh, to interact with us as well. Uh, going a little bit further down, uh, this is where I start to see this automatic trend of transitioning between a meeting, which has been used for a webinar, and what is uh, what we've experienced so far as a live event format. And our 20,000 person view, where they can only view listen to the content, see what's on the screen, is the experience that someone will have when they're in a live event, uh, when they're 20 to 30 seconds behind. Now, uh, we've discussed this a bit with the, the messages, which we'll have a look at shortly in the, the message center. But I see that this automatic transition is about trying to simplify our choices if we are running a meeting or we're organizing a webinar, and maybe we do want to scale up to that large event or large audience uh, for for the purpose of a webinar. Um, now, we can see that there are two sides to this. There's a thousand people that can come off mute, they can um, interact, they can chat if we're going to allow them, uh, but, but then there's the other audience, which is uh, view only. So we see that, that automatically transitioning. And this is why I think that while we haven't seen a lot of development around the live events capabilities within Microsoft Teams, I think we're seeing this trend that um, more capabilities are coming to a, a Microsoft Teams meeting so that we can use them for webinars rather than having to go to this production format of live events. Um, uh, following along with that trend, the, the ability to have deeper attendance reporting um, and there's our 365 Dynamics uh, view that we can um, 
you know, cover up or rather follow on from that live event experience, uh, from that webinar experience. Now, if I just go a bit further down to past all the chat and various different announcements there, we get down to an area in security, which are, is still part of this trend of enabling a Microsoft Teams meeting to be used for a webinar. Uh, I point to the feature around disabling attendee video during meetings. Now, this was talked about during uh, some of the security announcements there that it is also about um, keeping our students safe. But think about it in a webinar sense. If you're organizing a webinar and uh, you're just using that Microsoft Teams meeting format, then you'll want to use some of these features to be able to prevent attendees from turning the video on and maybe being distracting from that content. So you can turn on the, the video of just the presenters and people that are facilitating the, the webinar. Um, there's the invite only uh, option as well. Uh, and I think there was another one around here too, which is not really mentioned here, but we do know this feature. The ability to turn people, uh, or rather make sure that everyone's on mute. And then if they do want to ask a question, then we can ask them to raise their hand and then we can give them the permission to come off mute so they can ask their question. Now, if we compare that with some of the, um, the messages that we saw in the message center, I've just uh, used a, a feature here called favorites here to try and you know, bring them all together. I know there's far more uh, messages, but you've seen over the, the month or so that some of these things have been landing in preparation for well, this, what I believe is a trend to make a, a Microsoft Teams meeting more of a, a functional thing for running webinars and maybe using live events less. Uh, we see uh, the registration page, and that was uh, released in the message center the 4th of February. Um, so we've started to see that, uh, of course, being announced at Microsoft Ignite and, and what will come. So we do have um, some dates there around it being rolled out early May uh, and will be complete by April. So we expect to see that shortly. Um, we have, going further up there, uh, anonymous presenters and live events. Well, you see that I just put this one on the list because I wanted to show you that this seems to be the only thing I've seen developed around live events uh, for a good year at least. Now, it's a good feature, but as you've seen, all the focus is on developing that meeting experience within Microsoft Teams. And for good reason, we're all in there. And maybe we just want to simplify that experience for our people who are running these uh, live events, or rather these webinars, because it's the same experience they have while they're in a meeting. Great user experience there. Uh, moving along, we've got uh, Teams meeting support for view only attendees. So that one landed at 17th of February, so not too long ago. Uh, but it's all about positioning towards this, turning a uh, Microsoft Teams meeting into not just a meeting, but also being able to run and host internal webinars and external webinars with a lot of moderation capability and a lot more excitement around the kinds of views that we can have. Here's our Dynamics view here. The message landed uh, this week, of course, during Microsoft Ignite, and we've seen what that looks like uh, as it's uh, being presented within the blog post and, and this as well. Um, so, yes, I think that that is the, the trend that we're seeing. Uh, that, let me know what you think, really. I, I know that it's been good to see a lot of advancements in the Microsoft Teams meeting experience because we're all, uh, you know, spending a lot of time in them and we want to make good use of the capabilities and format that's available to us. Uh, but I do think that uh, we're seeing a trend to making that meeting experience so good and so easily transitioning to these larger audiences with uh, lots of options that are simple for people to use if they want to make the, the content quite engaging, the presentation modes engaging. Um, I believe that it's about trying to make that meeting a one-stop shop. That's my opinion. Those are my thoughts and my reflections on that Microsoft Ignite announcements and everything that's landing there in the message center. Do let me know what you think. This is Daryl from Modern Workplace Change, signing off. Bye for now.